This is going to be a Sunday morning of Lord has made for us all. I truly rejoice and glad it. A cold winter morning, kind of like the old days, I guess. We really haven't had too much of a winter yet, so we can't be too unhappy, I guess. But it uh, looks like we've got some more stuff. A lot of winter coming in, Wednesday, Thursday. Some kind of storm coming in, it sounds like. So make sure you got your preserves in, ready to go, and, uh, and uh, ready to hunker down for this uh, potential. Uh, folks out east, uh, I'm about to talk about Bob. I think he's got close to 24 inches. He's at, uh, the power was out or not. It wasn't, his concern was going to go out. And uh, it was about an hour west of Boston. And they're, they're, uh, Boston, uh, the uh, Massachusetts guy hit very hard and all that. And so for all the folks uh, on the east coast, uh, we pray for them this morning that they're going through this, uh, this winter. Um, let's see. Uh, I'd like to have a couple of announcements this morning. Reminder that uh, Monday, Monday evening at 7 o'clock, we have a Zoom Bible study. We're also meeting here at 10 o'clock now for a, uh, a, a Sunday school, adult Sunday school, in the morning for about an hour. We'll go through the lectionary each, uh, before church each Sunday. Join us that if anyone would like. Remind that we have moved our annual meeting to February 27th because of some financial issues. We're able to get uh, with Brenda's illness, we we're not able to really get those completed, so we decided to move it. The same thing we have with the kingdom of potluck. We'll learn more about that as we get closer to our February 27th annual meeting. Uh, we can get the reports in if you have any. Most reports are in already, so I'll get those in if you have a report to bring in for those. It is with great sadness that I announced the death of our treasurer, uh, Brenda Washington. She had a valiant fight, uh, but it was a fast fight. She had uh, stage four uh, lung cancer, took her, and so we pray for her Dewey and her family. Uh, the funeral arrangements are uh, tomorrow, at one o'clock, at Rodenberger Funeral and Funeral Home in Napoleon. And 11 till 1 will be a visitation at Rodenberger tomorrow. Then the, on Saturday, February 5th, will be a celebration of life from 11 to 4. That will be at St. Paul's Lutheran Church there in Poland, the Trinity Center that they have there. So I think it's the second. And, uh, and I want to thank, you know, we pray for Brenda and her and his family. She served us faithfully for I, close to two years, year and a half to two years. I know that she was our treasurer, and she's actually a trustee. And joined our church as a trustee also. So we'll miss her dearly. She was uh, part of our fellowship. And uh, we're diligent for our, our financial side. I'll just read this quickly uh, to remember her. Brenda Lee Washington, 58, was born in Ohio, died peacefully on Tuesday, January 25th at her residence. She was the most beautiful, loving, supportive wife, business partner, and friend. She was loved and cherished by everyone she met. She will be greatly missed by all of her memory and how she touched people will last forever. She was born on August 17, 1963, at that one Manor Hospital to the late Wynn and Marilyn Old Hill. On September 25, 1982, she married Dwayne Dewey Watchman. Brenda attended Liberty Center High School, a four-county joint vocational school. She worked as a waitress for many years, even starting with a drive food place on roller skates. She also worked at Napoleon Pizza Hut, Empire Restaurant, the finishing room and solder manufacturing for about seven years. She continued her schooling at the same time at Northwest Technical College and earned her degree in accounting. She started bookkeeping at Walter's Collision in Napoleon for many years, helping about her accounting. She then worked at, for Complete Wireless in Napoleon in an old ship in a, in a tanning studio. Her and her husband purchased an old ship in Washington in 2016. She also worked for Kane and Kane, accountants during tax season. Eventually, she started her own accounting firm and was an accountant for various local Washington businesses and several other out-of-state companies. She took online courses and became a QuickBooks consultant. She worked many hours out of her home office seven days a week. She was a very successful skill at what she did for clients. She hired two assistants, Abby and Emily. And in 2020, they created the accounting business BAM. The office was connected to OSHIP, so when I had too many customers, she would come to help them catch up, help them catch up. She wore many hats in business. Her passion, offline duty, was socializing and being around friends. She loved music, dancing, bands, and events. She was formerly, she was normally the first one on the dance floor, which got the others involved. 
She loved getting to know others and was a true blessing. She got sick in September 2021, and within four months, she was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. She was survived, she was survived by her husband Dewey, siblings Wesley Hill and Diane Terry Moore. Funeral services will be held at 1 p.m. on Monday, January 31st, at Logan Gutenberg Gray Funeral Home in Plano, Ohio. The visitation will be from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The tournament will follow at Riverview Memorial Gardens. The Salvation of Life meal will be held on Saturday, February 5th, at 11 to 4, at St. Paul Lutheran Church Trinity Center, located on the back side of the school. The moral contributions may be made to Dwayne Watson to cover medical and funeral expenses or the American Cancer Society. So we will remember Brenda for all that she was for us and the gift that she brought to us, that gave her to us in this church. We're dutifully and successfully and faithfully for us. We pray for our family going forward. May God bless and receive her into his loving arms. Um, what else do we have here today? Birthday. Yeah, birthday is just somebody turned 70 yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Can we sing happy birthday to Pastor Bill? Yeah. Happy birthday to Pastor Bill. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. Yeah, here we go. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's now join our opening hymn, the Church's One Foundation, number 544. Sin against you in thought, word, and deed, 
I spoke like a child. I fought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall understand fully, even as I have been fully understood. So faith, hope, love abide. These three, but the greatest of these, is love. Let's read from the book of 1 Corinthians. I'm going to turn to our gospel lesson this morning, and I'm going to take it from the gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 21 through 30. In his words from the gospel of Luke. And he began to say to them, Jesus Christ, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum. Do here also in your own country. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his own country. But in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when there came a great famine over all the land, and Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath. They rose up and put him out of the city, and led him to the brow of the hill on which the city was built that they might throw him down headlong. But passing to the midst of them, he went away. And as we read from the Gospel of Luke, these words are true. We can indeed be trusted. Amen. Amen. Let's now join our son him, beautiful him, your Lord and Father of mankind, for day of our foolish ways, number 470.
a wonderful prayer, really, that we can, can use to turn to God and, and talk to God, for sure. I was praying. In the words of my mouth, meditations of our hearts, be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our neighbor. Amen. This sort of be talking about love this morning. We've been talking about this love. Taking from our text this morning from our Gospel, Luke chapter 4, verses 21 to 30. There's a story of a preacher whose preaching met with comments of affirmation, affirmative praise, when he spoke about certain sins, like gossip, or drinking, or lying, or cheating, or stealing. With the mention of each and every sin, there were people who were heard to say, Amen, preacher. But, when the preacher mentioned smoking, some of the congregation blurted out, Preacher, you done quit preaching and go on the med There were those in the congregation of the synagogue of Jesus who protested because Jesus had quit preaching and had gone to med they thought. Jesus' revelation brought out their reaction. Jesus emphasized the things that needed to be resolved in those days. God loved, God's love knows no bounds. The audience in the synagogue was okay hearing about God's love, so long as it met with their expectations. When Jesus talked about how God's love reaches out to even the Gentiles. People in the synagogue got upset. Why were they upset? Jesus' interpretation was not what they wanted to hear. The status quo had already been established, according to them. As someone once said, vested interest has no desire to alter the entrenched position. I think about that a little bit. Vested interest has no desire to alter the entrenched position. Jesus spoke about how God's love needed to be relevant, relevant love that connects rather than love that is tightly held tenaciously and exclusively. Tenacity is a good thing. Lest there is misplaced energy and emphasis on it. It was this misplaced energy and emphasis that Jesus' sermon was addressing that day. Jesus revealed how God's love extends to the Gentiles. Does familiarity breed contempt? Jesus quoted a proverb to them when he said, Physician, Heal thyself, which means that a person needs to deal with his own affairs before giving advice to others. The crowd asked Jesus to repeat the kind of miracles he had done in Capernaum. But Jesus reminds the Nazarenes that a prophet is without honor in his own hometown. Jesus was recalling Israel's history of both rejecting and persecuting their own prophets. It made them even angrier when Jesus pointed out how God showed mercy to the Gentiles in verses 26 and 27. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 46, Jesus asked how genuine is our love if we only love those who love us. Do we also seek to love only those who are most like us. Isn't that the kind of love that shows favoritism, perhaps? What was the crowd's reaction? They were filled with rage and wanted to throw Jesus off a cliff. Someone else declared that what makes all of this preaching so unacceptable is that the people of Jesus expected Messiah to is that people of Jesus expect the Messiah to come and destroy Israel's enemies and minister to them. 
Someone once said, every criticism of Christ is a revelation, not of Christ, but of the men who make the criticism. What were these people saying about themselves by their actions? What do our actions say about us today? Do they truly have God in their hearts? Do we truly have God in our hearts? There's a little story of a little four-year-old girl who went to her pediatrician once for a checkup. And as the doctor looked in her ears, he asked, you think that I'll find Big Bird in there? The little girl was silent. So they were. Next, the doctor took a tongue depression and looked down her throat. And he asked, you think I'll find the cookie monster down there? Again, the little girl was silent. Then the doctor put a stethoscope to her chest. As he listened to her heart, he asked, you think I'll find Barney in there? He spoke up. Oh no, little girl, where why? Barney's not my other pants. Oh, Barney's not. <laughs> but Jesus is in my heart. Amazing. Poor little girl. Well, when God looks at our hearts, my friends, what does he see? We have to accept God's supreme authority and God's sovereignty in our lives. We have to accept that God is unpredictable, uncontrollable, and unstoppable. God saves sinners. All sinners who will repent. Jesus called Matthew, who was a tax collector, to be a disciple. Jesus also called Simon Peter, who was a fisherman. What is significant about these two disciples? What is significant is that they were on different sides of the fence in their views. And they became united as Jesus Christ's disciples. How can we love God with all our heart, our soul, and mind and strength if we do not accept His supreme authority? Our belief will demonstrate both our behavior and our belief. Do we mean it when we call Jesus Christ Lord? We must make Jesus Lord of our lives. We must make Lord part of our lives. A pastor asked for the help of a talented man once in this congregation to paint both sides of the church bus. The pastor even wrote up out a pattern correct spelling for it. The end result was that it said that correctly on one side of the bus. It said so and so united church of Christ. So and so united church of Christ. The other side of the bus said so and so untied church of Christ. <laughs> so no mistake there. Untied and untied. That raises an important question, don't you think? Are we united or are we untied? Do we hesitate to move forward because of fear at times? We need to be the disciples that we are called to be, my friends. Over 160 plus years ago, same time as our church was in existence, Daniel Webster made a speech before the United States Senate. The Senate was debating the admission of the Western frontier to the Union. Apparently, Webster was opposed to the annexation of that area. What do we want to do with this region of savages and wild beasts and deserts, shifting sands and whirlwinds of dust, cactus, and prairie dogs, he says. What do we do with the western coast of 3,000 miles, rock-bound, cheerless, and uninviting? Years later, Halford Lucock of the Yale Divinity School cited Webster's speech as a reminder that our judgments can come back to haunt us. Be careful in your judgments, said Luca. You may reveal far more than you intend to reveal. God, my friends, wants us to expand his kingdom here on earth. What are the things that keep us from doing that? Why were the people 
Jesus' hometown hesitant. We need to make God's vision our vision. The people of Jesus' hometown lack vision. Do we lack vision? Before I answer that, consider the theory of a recent study. While reading the paper earlier this week, I came across an alarming prediction. The article mentioned that someone had done a study to determine how many prisons we will need in the future based on the answers of a survey done by both third and fourth graders. Now what does a study like that say about us as citizens of God's kingdom? Do we love only those who are just like us? Will the church of modern day grow if we only love those who are just like us? What good is it for us to do good things, have God-given gifts, and even the faith to move mountains but lack love? In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 through 7. Paragraphs. Can our love change the future prediction for children who live right here in our community? What about all the others who are disconnected in our community? Religion is a matter of the heart and not the head. We must make the journey from the head to the heart, my friends. Someone once said, the longest journey you'll ever take from the head to your heart. Paul said that knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. My friends, the heart is a harbor. Love pushes out indifference and or hate of the opposite. I once heard it said that people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. I think there's a realtor that has that on here in town who uses that phrase. People do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. Does our love connect people to God and our community of faith or exclude them? Is our church family? this church, using our own to connect to our community, to know that to those who need to increase their faith. Are we doing that? Are we loving each other? Are we sharing our love? All of us can meet each day as we go through our lives. I hope that we are. Does our lives connect people to God and community faith or exclude them? I hope indeed that it connects, it connects us to that. Let's always go forth with love in our hearts, true love, forgiving love, real love, to all those who need. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, my friends. Father, we give you great thanks again this week. For continued blessings, continued beautiful winter tides, winter weather, the beautiful snow, the beautiful family times together, beautiful sounds we can hear from our ears, tastes of food, the sights of beautiful flowers and trees and lights, so many things, Lord, we give you thanks. Thank you for family and friends, the love that we feel. Thank you, Lord, for the ability that you have given to us to love. We may share love as we receive it from you and from others. Thank you for the love that we're receiving in this world. Lord, again, thank you for these blessings, for all that you do for us, and we know they come from you. And miss the blessings we do have difficulty sometimes, Lord. So we want you to hear our prayers this morning. Yes, and we pray now, we pray particularly this day for Ben Washington, Dewey, for his family, friends. 
We thank you for your gift, her, to this church, to us, our fellowship. We thank you for the friendship we were able to enjoy and for all that she did for this church. The lady and person that she was, we give you thanks. And with her, welcome her into your loving arms, Lord. Help us to go forward in her memory. Remembering things again, the time she was with us. Times when we parade, times when we start our festival. Board meetings. Another time that she did for us. Help us to always remember Brenda in our hearts. Lord, we ask you of all those, again, who need you today, in whatever manner it may be. We pray for those who are still dealing with COVID, those families that have lost loved ones to COVID who are not with you. Pray for those with cancer, any difficulties with health, family issues, financial issues, work issues, career, dealing with weather, accidents, the tough times of life, Lord, that we must face. Give us all your strength and support, your peace to go forward, your hope for the future. Father, I'll hear our very personal private prayers for this moment. We'll lift them up to you together, silently. Hear our prayers this morning, our silence, let's pray.
bring this offering of your people, remembering in your love those who have brought it and those for whom it's given. And so follow it with your blessing that they may promote peace and goodwill among all people and advance the realm of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's now join in our closing hymn. We all can eternal number 508 in the green.